Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for coming back, for <laughs> watching this. Um, I'm super excited. I'm super excited to do another interview with Eve Lorgan, who um, I introduced you to before or introduced you. Many of you probably already know of her, have heard of her, have read her articles, her books, seen the other videos that she's been participating in. And in the first video, we already explained what the alien love bite is, what a love bite is. And um, so in this video, we wanted to dive into healing after a love bite, healing after going through traumatic relationships, after going through this soul trauma. And um, how do you clean up this battlefield of your soul, right? So thank you, Eve, for coming back and um, for sharing your knowledge with us, which is just immense. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's good to be here. And there's always a lot to share. And um, I mean, we're learning, I'm learning stuff all the time. So um, we can probably jump into um, some of the recent videos that I've done with my colleague, Laura Leone, as well as a new testimonial that I wrote on my website called um, Ancient Priestess Dark Cupid Testimonial, which was a really good example of some of what happens with um, what we're calling the Dark Cupid love bite or um sometimes it feels like oh it's a twin flame and and then there's unusual narcissistic uh energy vampirism confusion and that that can go along with some new age groups and guru type um healing and uh, meditation groups that are actually what i call infected mm -hmm. by these beings that work basically in clusters or hierarchies and they'll work through certain humans who are basically organic portals or these quote yes dimensional entities and then they seem to know who you are and how easy you are to to link into because of your own um, what you're manifesting let's say in your aura in your energy field we can just jump off on this one because I felt like this was really relevant in terms of a, of a good example of the whole spectrum was demonstrated in this one testimonial by a woman named Grace we just call her Grace and that's not her real name but um, she had had at least two quote love bites, although there was actually more in her life, but she realized that there was probably a connection to early um, cult involvement in her family of origin as a teenager. Um, and it was actually a Christian cult where they lived uh, in a community away from people and had, you know, the, the priest or whatever, and the priest had had sex with many women kind of thing and, and the belief systems and also utilizing her gifts, her, she, because she had true spiritual gifts and a true yes. psychic ability, and then utilizing that to promote um, their cult and the leader in the cult, which is really um, fed, actually it's hyperdimensional beings who are being fed by all these people who are worshiping this figure, and under the guise of, uh, could be under the guise of Christianity, could be under the guise of Buddhism, could be under the guise of actually any religious kind of um, scripture. Mm -hmm. So. I felt that her case was really good in demonstrating um, how she um, experienced this quote love bite. And I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up and um, screen share. Pull it up and maybe do a screen share so that if someone wanted to, because it is actually a long one, and there's a lot of um, a lot of her oh. own words and experiences, which I know it's a lot to go through for someone who maybe not like to read. But I did do a, a preface to that, where there's an introduction which kind of explains what it is and what was happening and why I commented the way I did. Mm -hmm. And um, I commented so that I could show, let's say from a therapist perspective and a personal experiencer of this as well, um, okay. the thought processes and the feelings of this experience as it's happening, like in this relationship and all the weird things that are happening, the paranormal things, the weird dreams, the psychic connections, and the kinds of thoughts and feelings and belief systems that are going through her mind and then the reactions and responses of the love bite partner or these other spirit guides in in response to her belief systems and her feelings that keep this dynamic play of loose feeding going on right and <clears throat> that's actually what's happening on another level which most psychologists probably would not really admit unless it was just a simple emotional vampire case of narcissism and the whole narcissistic supply kind of thing. And we can get into that as well. <clears throat> so let me know when you're ready. <clears throat> if you pull this you see my screen, because it's actually, it froze on me, your screen, but I don't know whether or not it's showing up on Google. 
One second here. And that hopefully Let stop. Didn't. Let me come back. Okay. Yeah, now it's not awesome. Maybe it won't do a screen share, and we'll just have to. You could refer to it if you could see it on your screen because I can't do both on my computer. Right. I didn't like to share. Um, well, I want to share this. So let's see here. Is oh, this now on? Can you see this? I see like a several okay. <laughs> images. And there we go. Okay. So that's part of it. We can just pull it up to the, um, okay. the title. So it to the top here. So this wanted. is an ancient priestess and dark cupid yeah. testimonial. And um, uh, it says here, courageous, uh, profound dark cupid, false twin flame type drama with two different men. And yeah. um, this includes family history, early trauma, sexual abuse, which is, it's like a running theme that um, these, these people that experience these type of things, they're already drilled in their childhood. They're already been, been um, exposed to trauma in their childhood, been broken. And yeah. Part of it, I believe it's part of the signature in terms of the history that can predispose their vulnerability but also the recognition by the beings that are working through people, or it could be directly on the astral plane or um, in certain temples even, or architecture where uh, the portals are already set up for these hyperdimensional beings to um, collect the loose and the worship energy and the, you know, whatever energy is being produced. Mm -hmm. So I felt that this testimony was good because it demonstrated, let's say current lifetime, um, family history, the early childhood abuse, the involvement in cults, um, the patterns, but also she discovered much later and it gave her more insights when she worked with her spirit. And um, what I really wanted to show, because I felt like she was the kind of person that was, um, you know, she was under a lot of uh, her own belief systems that she was raised in her cult and in her family of origin. So there's certain belief systems that predisposed her to what I call the guilt programming. Okay. And in, in religious circles, there, there's a lot of the guilt programming, especially for women, to be more of, a, and I can call it the doormat thing, where yes. Um, yes. you're just kind of groveling doormat for the master, the man, the teacher, the guru. Yes. And in certain um, Eastern traditions where you should never like, uh, you should always be less than, than your teacher. Mm -hmm. or, or, you know, um, people kind of you know, tend to forget that. I find that so and your yeah, the teacher, but unfortunately, this the teacher takes advantage and you know has sex with several of the women in the cult kind of thing. So, yeah, but people also forget that they're meant to liberate themselves, you know, and they see themselves as continually being in this subservient, um, yeah. a position to others that have this enlightened kind of position. I understand humility and I understand being humble, but um, yeah. it's still about, you know, enlightening yourself. And you do get to a point where you're, how should I put this? You can be more discerning towards people that are saying they're your teachers. You don't have to accept everything, you know? And, and the whole discernment issue is that that's like a big part of um, a big part of healing. And one of the things that I had hoped to show in this interview, and that's why I, I put, some things in bold, and then I put some things in italics, which was like my opinion of when she, the thoughts she was going through and the feelings she was going through, and then the, yeah. the behaviors that was happening from, let's say, the, the dark Cupid love bite partner, or right. this, right. Partner, and it was, I tried that's to show, you know, she's, that's what you yeah, that's and, and, you and as you follow through, actually, this is the preface, but as you follow through, and then the testimonial, this is why I wanted to show how our belief systems and the guilt in particular um, will actually predispose us and leave a, a hook open for these beings to have an agreement of entrapment to link into mm -hmm. us and interfere. So that That's, was part. Well, let's start at the beginning here then. Um, Cause she's writing here that she's been seeing spirits since she was a child, had issues due to demonic attacks sexual abuse as a child, being in a Bible-based doomsday cult for 13 years, then being led to various cult-like New Age groups and two love bite situations that are more than, like the new predator profile. So mm -hmm. you wrote in brackets, early childhood trauma, especially sexual abuse, demonic interference and in cult environment as significant causation to vulnerability. Yeah. yeah. Then you write as well, 
that um, she, well, she writes that she begins to wonder why so many things are wrong. And you wrote, uh, questioning why fe things felt wrong is good. Belief or some yeah. early critical judgment on whining causes a guilt that shuts her down from taking action, telling the truth, etc. That is so true. So many women are told, stop yeah, whining, stop talking. Yeah, like the new age, let's say some of the new age programming would be what you call blaming the victim mm -hmm. and that the belief system or the value system that says, well, you need to be positive in order to heal. You have to just be positive and it all go away. And so when they start having these uncomfortable feelings and the red flags are going, they're questioning things, they're not feeling good about it and they feel like they need to talk about it, then they feel like they have to shut down because they that's not being positive, right? Yeah. So it's actually, um, there's some kinds of programming that actually shuts you down from yeah. being able to and listen to what your spirit nudging is telling you because your feelings are telling you something your body is telling you something and so that's something we need to listen to instead of automatically put a judgment on it which actually shuts down the spirit's uh communication and awareness so this i wanted to show that no it's actually good that it's okay to have feelings that you might think are negative and that you need to, to share you need to question and that um who's telling you that you are being a whiner and that you're being negative Okay, unless you're, you're doing it all the time, right? But in her case, she, she wasn't like that. She was actually somebody who was very reflective and um, conscientious and, you know, to the point of um, probably not doing, she should have done more in terms of um, calling um, the guy on his shit, basically. You know what I mean? Or call, calling the cult leader on his stuff. But a lot of times you're raised that way, and a lot of times women are raised to be a little bit more take the back seat and don't be a bitch. Don't be too uh, aggressive or assertive. And so then that makes us vulnerable to these predators, but it's also true. And uh, this is something else that I had come across and I didn't put it in this article, but it was a website that was written by a self-professed narcissist who was most likely an organic portal who was probably a winged serpent or a Draco mm -hmm. and that admitted to targeting empathic and compassionate women and was able to recognize their aura. And he talked about the scarlet and the rose and the red aura that they emanated mm -hmm. and how their behaviors basically tipped them off that they would be easy prey because it really is a feeding operation. And in this website, and I'm not gonna give the, the author of that website who's a self-professed narcissist the attention because yeah. it is what they want and energy is what they want. And I, I'm not even gonna bother doing that. I'm just gonna say that they're all self-professed narcissists who know what they're doing and actually can explain the psychological dynamics of, for example, raising you up on a pedestal and then slowly um, crashing you down through different control and manipulation tactics, which is deliberate in order to extract loose and emotional mm -hmm. energy or sexual energy, depending on what they're doing. Right. So right. Um, that's, I just wanted to state that because that's a huge part of what's happening. And yeah. it is a target. It is a targeting. So what was happening with this woman, it was just kind of like blaming herself and finding out what she's doing wrong. And there was a lot of guilt pro pro programming going on in her thought processes, which I kind of picked up. But I also saw that her spirit was nudging her every step of the way to, to listen. And, and so that she had the humbleness and the purity and the, the, her spirit really working with her, even though she would waffle back and forth between, let's say, the programming and um, the interference would, would move in again. And it, and it kind of goes back and forth. And this may go on for years, you know, for mm -hmm. people where you feel like you're taking two steps forward, three steps backward, you know, one step forward, you know, whatever. But you but, feel like it's also because they have, because I've encountered people in myself as well, right? But I don't really want to get into that. <laughs> but um, that have, how should I put it? It's not energetic <laughs> implants in that sense. Like there are no, the, it's not the, 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 it's entities, entities. It's like the person that they're connecting with is yeah. implanting ener entities into them. Right, yes. into their auric field, into their chakra, because I've done um, healing, energy healings, and on myself as well, where these entities would jump out. And before I even knew about Dracos, reptilians, all of this, wow. I would see entities that would come out of, well, one came out of me that was blind. It only had a mouth. It had a long tail, two legs. And um, that was basically it. And it was just like, it was a feeder, a feeder, a feeder. And it reminded me so much of the energy of the person that I was with at the time. 
And, and so I started that. looking this up and that's where I stumbled over all of this, right? And um, in Germany, they have, I find it interesting because in mythology, they have so many stories that um, talk about when you really dig into it, psychological, but also astral beings, things that people um, would acknowledge and recognize back in the day, right? And one of the things that they consistently talk about in German mythology is this winged serpent or this, um, the Lindwurm, they call it the Lindwurm, right? And oh, it was it was it? Sorry? What was the other word besides the winged serpent that, was it in German? L-I-N-D-W-R-M. Oh. And yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a kind of um, dragony being, but it's a negative. It's a definite wow. negative and it's always being fought down. Yeah. And um, the characteristics that they ascribe to this Lindwurm, it, it really matches the characteristics of people that carry that kind of energy, right? So it's, it's really interesting to dive into those old mythological um, tales and see you know, where they, they packed in there, what they knew about what was going on on that level, you know? Yeah, and it's almost as if some current I, to bring it back to what you were saying that these these people they they stick in these loops for years. I think it also has to do with them not being able to release these entities or know that there is something to be released out of them. What do you say? Yeah, like a yeah. testimonial. She uh, as she did and started facing things where she actually had time to reflect, and so she had to basically do kind of like a no contact thing for a while mm -hmm. with one of the love bites or both of them where she actually had a space of time to just reflect and sit like in meditation or with her spirit to to get insight on what was happening and so she encountered the the draco she called it reptilian draco but i think it was a winged one which might i think it was more of a draco mm -hmm. and then that had interacted with her throughout time through several lifetimes and there was an original one where it came through and there was like an agreement, but it was through a trauma, entrapment, priestess, um, a sex slave kind of thing, actually. But done in that culture, in that time, as if it was a sacred uh, right for these beings playing God. Mm -hmm. But it, it was really a manipulation. So that actually entrapped her through time where this being, you know, and her agreed over time. And so she started recognizing the same being and the same energy behind several of the men in her life as well as other lifetimes. So that that's a clue right there that it, it can go for several lifetimes until we get to the root of it. So some relationship patterns repeat and we wonder why and we're like, we try to do all the right things in our current lifetime and all the therapy and couples counseling or whatever. Yeah. Only to find out later if we did deeper, deeper insightful meditation or healing, we may find that it has a deeper root which um, so all these things actually tie together when we talk about healing and having to get to the root of how to get rid of the one that's interfering, that causing so that every partner from some time forward in your life, it, it, it keeps being the same predator. So in this other narcissist website of a self-professed narcissist, they talked about how they have a network of them, right? Who basically kind of share amongst themselves and have this inner communication of, uh, perfect juicy uh, targets mm -hmm. who are these empathic women or, or men depending on the case so it's it's like there's a cluster of hyperdimensional uh, man machinations and engineering going on that will create these targets so yeah. it really is a supernatural thing and it's not all our fault and i think that there's Why a lot of empathic women what is it about these women that makes them so well i think it's the spiritual love energy that feeds the part that they've cut off from themselves that they no longer have access to so it feeds them and then like if they don't get their feeding for example a lot of times they'll go through an extreme rage and go through abuse or do things like um when you're your most vulnerable, they know it's time for a feeding, right? So they'll, you know, it'll be quiet for a while, then they have to create a drama, and then you open up and get vulnerable, and then they, they need more feeding, and then, then they'll do a crash you down kind of emotional mm -hmm. manipulation, which like hurts you emotionally very deeply, and it's like very shocking, but they do it to get the feed, because they always have to have the feed. And yeah. so it's, it's the narcissistic supply of their feed that they're doing, and why they're doing this, and it's crazy making for the other person, because it can 
turn you to great self-doubt and, and anguish and, and weaken you to the point of, of you know killing you or making you feel like you're crazy but we have to realize that this is very real and um, it is a targeting kind of thing so we have to be strong to recognize the red flags and to you know basically do the no contact when you come into contact with that energy we have to do the no contact with it or find the root of it if it's if it's on our side mm -hmm. then what we can do to take self-responsibility to, to cut to the root of however it's entering into our sphere mm -hmm. so it really i mean learning about relationships and um, learning about you know what's healthy communication and um, some of the things that i'm learning over again through another modality because I have like regular psychological training and relationship counseling, marriage and family counseling was actually my master's degree. And um, so I'm learning something from, I mentioned this therapist, her name is Jennifer Foster. And she's mm -hmm. out of the UK and she's created this method called energy dynamics. Mm -hmm. And she's basically um, made it very, very simple so that even children and teenagers and adults can learn this method to have self-understanding and so that how we can apply our own power needs so that um, we don't fall into patterns that are unhealthy that hurt our relationships or hurt our health like addictions or um, compulsive behaviors or being too controlling or whatever it is so we all have certain power needs as humans so that when we do things on a more deep authentic level of being which gets back into and what the Taoists would say that's more um, earth power feeling centered so it would be more of a feeling being centering as opposed to a mental figure it out kind of thing or um, needing approval or um, uh, <clears throat> what we do in this western world is we're very accomplishment oriented mm -hmm. <laughs> like in the western world of science and technology and how school is set up and our educational system that you know to get the, the brownie points in the, in the approval and the you know, like I feel good about myself because I was able to do well in school and, you know, win these track meets or all these accomplishment oriented things that are like, um, I'm needing approval. So if we can get back into our creative mode of being <clears throat> where we get our needs met through feeling and being okay and feeling safe for who we are and what we're doing in a more natural way, then we don't constantly need the approval or the compulsive addiction to um, the mental sphere of activity, because actually the demons will interact on that level, like um, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. infection, and manipulation, which is a whole other kind of topic getting off, but that will <clears throat> take advantage of the, the mental realm. So I think the more we get into our, our feeling human power needs of functioning from a compassionate communication and real human, instead of all in the mental realm, we're we're more rooted and have more resiliency to the, the methods of how they're getting us out of our power right because if we're out of our power we we don't um we can't tap into the power to have the red flags awaken us to see what's happening so we'll know when to to stop or to do the no contact or to redirect so that we're, we're not interacting with the predators and the parasites because they are out you know that this that there's been a rise in in predators and not just because we know now and we're looking at it and we see it more but also because of the structure of our society that women are more left alone than they were before that they're single motherhood um there's no like um community especially in north or in western societies right that women live together in communities like in let's say indigenous societies where they're watching out for each other where they carry on traditions stories where they recognize these things you know what i mean Absolutely. yeah in fact it's 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 a strategy i mean this is what i call it sounds so paranoid but it's the death cult strategy of who's uh, in the western culture in particular what they're doing to society to get them vulnerable for what i think is a type of takeover of spiritual energy which is a type of life source energy and so our human needs need to be met through natural relationship and natural community. And that's something that more indigenous cultures did. And even pre, pre cell phones and pre computer, we might have had more of those human to human interactions and even social activities that was more connected. But, and then so now in our society, like instead of families like living close to their, their cousins, 
and and there was always a mom in the neighborhood where the kids can play and there was always somebody to connect with now they're what we called in the old days we called them latch key kids where both parents are working and the kids are by themselves watching tv and they're off hours before the parents come home or they're sitting in front of the computer or sometimes they're at uh, child care so there's not there's no longer close connections and close social interactions that's feeding the naturalness that gives them the spiritual resiliency to connect with the true true nature of their spirit self and emotional self so instead they're being connected to the internet connected to the tv or by themselves and it's it's not natural but unfortunately only people who've lived before let's say cell phones or even before computers were in the norm do we know what it was like when we were able to connect in a natural way where society where we can get certain needs met so what's happening is we're not getting our natural human needs met in relationships or even in families or in communities so these needs are not being met and we're trying to fulfill them through let's say online gaming um, pornography or even online um, social forums and then or even online dating where um, everything's artificial and so you can't actually get the true human needs met so it causes a blindness and then the ease of predators coming in and using these mediums makes it easier for predators as well yeah. so it's like um, we've normalized um, cutting off all our natural human needs and functioning which would be natural for a human to be content and safe and in this creative imaginative mode which is actually the pure spirit what I call the pure original spirit mm -hmm. and then the counterfeit spirit is trying to hijack and take over and throw us into these other realms of being where it's not even natural and then copycatting the originals and then feeding on the originals energy mm -hmm. and then um, being abusive and narcissistic and these like weird love bite things yes so and they're really good at doing this because some of the beings that are actually behind the humans who are playing this out it's actually hyper dimensional so that's what we're figuring out even though there is a lot to human psychology alone that could explain this but I think if we wanted to get to the deeper root of some of these deeper cases like the one I just showed right the ancient mm -hmm. priest thing and we'll we get, get back to that yeah, there's we'll. a deeper cause and condition that goes back to more of a spiritual thing mm -hmm. so this is why if we want true relationships to really work we have to work on a spiritual level and then also a, what is our true human needs um, in our body and in our emotions and grounded to the earth and grounded to our true nature so that um, we're not functioning actually outside our body or all in our head all in this mental energy so you know computers and science and technology is all in the head so that's where everything's going so everything's going away from true human spirit and and going away so this is why i think the transhumanism agenda and ai is actually very harmful to the entire human race and that which is natural and spiritual and good and normal and it's throwing this abnormal uh, bullshit in our yeah. lives and, and and then making it like it's normal so the people who are really waking up who have the true spirit in them just screaming right yeah. and we're hurting yeah we're actually <laughs> the normal ones so we're in this upside down world where the abnormal is considered normal and then they're calling you crazy when you're actually um you're seeing right. it, what it is and wanting to redirect and recorrect to an original truth mm -hmm. of, of behaving and being and interacting according to a, a mutuality of respect and kindness and communication and learning what each other's true needs are so that um, we're not starving each other out in relationships or in our families right and in our communities so it, it is somewhat of a battle for you know people who've actually woken up and they want to create like communities of um because there are people even in the state that I'm in that there's um, what I call the compassionate communication circles where they're training and learning and creating groups where we can get together and do the just one-on-one -on -one or in a group communication of what they call it nonviolent communication where you talk about your feelings and your needs as, as a human and you strip through a lot of the false belief systems and you get down to the true root what are what are just natural human needs are and seeing each other on those levels and respecting each other on those levels mm. and then and then think it makes it so much easier then you then you feel okay you feel like you're you're fed and as a human and you're not hurting all the time 
But these things aren't happening naturally in our families and relationships. You mentioned that too, like this, this constant yeah. hurt, this constant pain has almost been normalized. It's been yeah. Yeah. like to be anxious to, to all of this is normal and it's not, it's not normal to constantly be in a state of <gasps> like this distrust and tension and paranoia and fear and doubt. And it's, it's not. <laughs> yeah. And I, you are awakening or having some really uncomfortable feelings because their spirit is basically saying, yes, yes, wake up, wake up, red alert, red alert. Well, maybe because that's true. Uh, and sometimes people are a little more overly paranoid and overly controlling. Mm -hmm. And um, and I've seen that happen as a, let's say, a defense mechanism, a psychological defense mechanism of deep unresolved trauma where um, they're not getting their true human power needs met because they've shut off, let's say, the inner child that's wounded and split off. Mm -hmm. And then and they'll try to control and manipulate on a mental realm in order to try to get the energy needs met to, to be normalized or their anxiety goes through the roof or they can't handle reality or they go or they go into rages or they go into deep depressions and, and so they they may do addictions of various kinds or sometimes they're just like controlling in everything they do in their life and that's actually part of the the, the disease yeah. so it's like we have to learn how to how to get our normal power needs met as humans and then once we know what that is, we can function better in our relationships, but we have to honor so, each other that way. So what does healing constitute to you? And I'm bringing this up because I, I, um, I had this discussion with a friend of mine who was a psychologist who was telling me like in clinical healing, the idea is to get you functional again, to be able to function in this matrix, in this society, to be able to go do a nine to five job and be able to function right but is that really healing not necessarily right so what are we talking about here when we're talking about healing because maybe it's it's some people have these like idealized forms of healing where once they're healed they're always going to be happy 24 7 they're never going we're going to have you know <laughs> any more challenges in life is that what we're talking about i don't think so i think that like if we go back to how can we maintain our functionality let's say in life, because, you know, there are some bottom lines that we need. Like we need um, shelter, food, water, and we need to feel safe relatively in a food and shelter and, and be able to make a living so that we're not out on the streets or being abused as sex trafficking or whatever. So there are some basic functional needs that need to be met that many people are actually struggling just to get those basic needs met. Mm -hmm. And so, the, the very first thing that we need to establish as a baseline before we can even do all this higher healing stuff yeah. is um, safety, you know, shelter, um, getting enough nutrition to, uh, to be able to think straight, be able to get enough sleep to function, to, to work or seek work or have enough energy to, to strategize on what you're going to do. So like the basics have to be met and that's like a basic power need that even animals have, right? So a lot of times those things are, um, we're not even actually recognizing that, that like the number one in therapy for people that I'm working with is um, a lot of them, they want to know the information. There's a common thing. So let's say they know they've been abducted by aliens or they know that they have missing time in their childhoods or uh, they were in some project and they know that there's like years where they don't remember or large segments where they don't remember and they want their memories back and they, they want their story back. But, they're not ready to go on the feeling level of what it means to be functional and safe on, on not just a physical level, but on an emotional level. So emotional safety has to happen before you can go to the next step. And it's kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs where you know, the bottom was bottom one is the, you know, the food and shelter. And the next one is like feeling safe and secure. And the next one is maybe some social needs. And the next one is, something else until you go for the higher uh, self-actualization. So a lot of us are kind of struggling even to get the basic human aids and then getting the emotional safety because the emotional safety is something that um, doesn't often happen, certainly in a love bite, for example, or, or if you're with somebody who's a psychic vampire or a dark Cupid thing, what we realize is um, there's, there's no emotional safety. So when there's no emotional safety, your brain's going to shut off. You, you may stay in amnesia and um, your spirit won't be able to 
get through to you until there's enough of safety of listening to create a change to create safety. So a lot of times we've normalized a lack of safety in relationships by normalizing, let's say, being a doormat or um, having someone dominate it and control us and treat us less than who we really are and normalizing that in the job, let's say with your boss, or uh, which is close to slave labor, right, and extreme disrespect. And, and in relationships, depending on your culture and the relationship, that so we have to we have to establish a mutuality of respect and safety, which for what I realize is a lot of us weren't even getting that. And that's why we weren't getting our, our power needs. We weren't able to go to the next level of any kind of self-actualization. Then we were falling into predation and illusion and falsehood and, and falling into these traps of these hyperdimensional beings that were actually using us to be their puppets to yeah. promote cult and their belief system and their chat, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So it was like, wow, you know, the whole emotional safety and the physical safety. And so how can we feel safe emotionally? Mm -hmm. How can we feel like we're understood or that we matter or that we actually are of value to someone else? Yeah. And that's huge. A lot of times that's not even happening in a, in a marriage. Okay, and then and so I have people saying, "Why is this happening?" And I'm like, "Let's look at this. Let's look at this." Well, did you know that this here is not happening? So how can you expect to be self-actualized when when this you know you're being in an abusive relationship with a with an addict who's who's like hosted by a, a reptilian, and and why are you still in this relationship? You know that you can't go anywhere until you deal with this first. But then they believe they have a karmic connection to this person, right? And they're yeah, like, that's Right, the illusions and the belief systems of, and this is what I, that we have to go back and look and take it apart and say, wait a minute, what are you believing right here? Which Why in that testimony I broke everything down in a way that probably was a long, right? A long and very detailed. And I said, wait a minute, what is she believing here? Um, what is this entity doing in response to what she did when she acted on the red flag and how they do the counterattack, and so we're work with it's basically a war until the spirit is sovereign and says no more i'm in control i'm setting boundaries no mm -hmm. and um sometimes we have to say no and then once we give ourselves the respect and we cut off the dysfunctionality stuff and then we can start building the safety so that we can start attracting and having the the better relationships and the better levels of healing mm -hmm. so it takes time really to even understand the process because many that i run into they're they're following belief systems they keep falling back into belief systems that are actually falling into traps that are disempowering absolutely yeah, they don't really know that oh this is a trap this is yeah. a trap why are you believing this is your twin flame why do you think you have to even have a twin flame absolutely. Um, why do you think you even have to have a boyfriend or a husband or, or a wife? Why can't you sit alone long enough to know yourself long enough so that you can um, know what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> or know why you're doing it? And, and you know, do you really want this? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's like pausing long enough, which is why in this grace testimonial, she actually took time to pause where her spirit could actually show her and, and through time, she was able to um, gain several steps forward as opposed to backward and finally get a handle on this and reach more and more levels of sovereignty. And it's a gradual process. It's not all at once. And, and as that happens, then, then we have better relationships. So at I some point, we somewhere that I, it's where we derive our sense of identity from, right? And that men derive their sense of identity through their work, their job, their um, successes, their career. But women derive it through their relationships, right? And through the men that they are they're in relationship with. So it's kind of like it's not just about security, it's not just about safety when we enter in to relationships with yes. men. It's also about our identity, right? And how we perceive ourselves, how we want to portray ourselves, right? Yeah, and that's like also Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where it's like um you know, above the you know, safety needs, there would be the social needs and then the identity who I am, and then maybe the self-actualization, which is much more independent. Um, but yeah, with women, we, we tend to define ourselves through our relationships because we're very community and connection oriented. It's, it's our nature to be, to actually see the whole, a lot of times to see the whole and the interactions and then the connections 
whereas men can be more they're really good at being focused out in the world and more linear in many ways and more self-focused and identified according to their one career, their one path. And, and they're good at that because they can, they can stay focused and not let all this other stuff kind of get in their way. And so they're strong that way, but they're also blinded in other ways. Whereas we can kind of go all over the place and lose our focus yeah. by not being stabilized emotionally because we're not feeling safe or, our identity needs aren't being met because you know women are like okay so i identify with my career and my relationship but what about when i'm a mom and i don't have the energy to do the career and the kids so one or the other has to go and then you end up burning the candle at both ends and then you lose it all mm-hmm. and so this is what happens to women who've either given up a career for having their children and then end up with a divorce and then losing their children and their career and their income earning potential for the rest of their lives and then have to rebuild, you know, in their 40s, in their 50s. Sometimes if they're lucky, they can rebuild in their 30s. Yeah. And then so, so it's like uh, we didn't have anything, like where's the identity? So these identity needs are not being met because they don't know where to meet these, because these needs aren't being met anymore because there's so much shifting going on. So that's, that's like if we can get back to a deeper root then we don't have to be identifying with maybe the man that we married or whatever. Like, um, are my, my screen froze, so I don't know if you're hearing me or if we got cut off. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. I don't know. Did the sound cut off too? No, nope. sound is there. I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Because it you know, reminded me of something. Now I, I lost my train I'm just going to go back to the article here, the blog post that you shared, the um, ancient priestess. And Ooh. one second because okay so um da, 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 da. what was it there was something i wanted to bring up one second bear with me yes um here with the the deep sexuality and the Kundalini energy. So she writes after some deep reflection, she made a decision to leave this group. And shortly after she met this man who she will refer to as John. And you write deep reflection is a good sign that her spirit is leading, questioning and trying to surface to break through denial and programming. So um, I think um, I want to talk about that, how many people like they have these red flags, they feel these red flags, but we go over it so easily. We just ignore them so easily, right? But that's your yeah. spirit sending you little like, hello, hello. Yeah, it's so amazing how we can, like not see what's right in front of us in awareness mm-hmm. that our spirit is actually communicating with us, trying to uh, tell us in as many ways as possible. And then we override that belief systems or guilt feelings or programming. And so, and also how she was also being interdimensionally uh, manipulated so that when she, let's say, cut off contact and questioned this thing, something else hurried up and tried to take its place, which is yes. classic. It's classic when, let's say, you break up with one, let's say, love bite or whatever, and then another one enters your sphere. Like, and I've had people tell this to me who have been in my book all, all the time, actually where they cut off contact and they questioned, you know, what was going on. Mm-hmm. And then within, you know, like days or, or weeks, um, then several enter their life and they're, they're also predators that it's as if there's an interdimensional thing trying to link back in. They lost their source, so they're linking. They're trying to link back in. And so there's a name for this in, in some cult circles where they call it out of the frying pan and into the fire programming. Mm-hmm. So they'll say out of the fire would be like, oh, you woke up to this dysfunctionality and you want to get out of that program or that relationship or whatever it is. And then mm-hmm. so you go out of the fire and then out of the frying pan, right, which is the right. heat, and then to the fire. So you go from, let's say, one cult leader to the next or one predator to the next or one situation to the next, which is the same pattern, right? Right. So that's what we want to avoid and we want to cut it off at its root. So right. that we can recognize it every time it shows up. And and she did admit to, you know, going to a support group for cult people, even though she admitted that she couldn't actually go into detail about what was really happening on these quote hyperdimensional levels. 
-hmm. or maybe even the kundalini thing which is a big part of a lot of this dark cupid new predator stuff yeah that because they they're able to access or they're maybe your energy is more accessible mm -hmm. and it and i think they can activate the kundalini and they have a way of being able to do that i mean that's yeah. what they're good at why like in the old days the vampires could be obsessed <laughs> And then they could activate that energy and you're like under the spell, right? right? And it's because they can access that energy and it's very blissful, but it's also draining and it also links you to them very powerfully. And, and that's why it's, uh, even when you break up, let's say you still feel them. You're yes. still, you're still, you still know what you're doing. You still know where he's at. <laughs> because they're still linked in. And this was something that was actually um, and they can still drain you even though they're not connected to talking yeah. to you, not doing they can still drain through that link yeah so it's like, like you're still like linking in pilfering like through your bank account you know they they found a way to hack in and they're you know energetically hacking in so we need to find out you know where they're hacking and how to close off those hack lines Mm -hmm. And I um, mean, it's not all about. I mean, I don't think it's all about somebody else healing the other person or, you know, getting no. a clearing. And, and I know that those can be helpful along the way. But why I wanted to share this testimonial was really that this woman, um, she had enough of her own awareness and listening to her spirit, and she had the qualities. And this is what I want to, if we can even see what that is. What are those qualities of the yeah. ability? to hear and be open to what your true spirit wisdom is showing you and that you're aware of. And what is that? Because I think in her case, she was like humble mm -hmm. and she's had this purity mm -hmm. and she also had this energy. She had natural gifts and, but she also probably put herself down more than she should have um, as a woman, which a lot of us do as women anyway, in certain cultures, <clears throat> but she had the, the purity and the openness and the ability to be humble enough to listen. And um, so sometimes <clears throat> what I see that sabotages that is um, what I call the over-intellectualization and the arrogance and hubris, which I see actually in some occult circles mm -hmm. where I mean, some people can call it whatever they want to call it. They can call it Illuminati or they can call it whatever it is. But if there's too much intellectual arrogance and yeah linear thinking and thinking they know it all uh, in could be they, they're a psychologist could be a scientist could be anything but sometimes that actually blocks the awareness of what it what you need to do to link in with that spirit awareness and power so it can build sovereignty so uh, you know even in the old christian circles they would say well repent you know well, what does that mean but that that sounds you know super religious but it's 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 a humility and an openness by still standing strong and being still with how's your spirit going to communicate with you so that um, you can take that information or that awareness and then redirect. So I like to call it my, um, my spiritual GPS. I think you're, 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 you're hitting on something here that is so vital and so important. I'm going to stop the share one second. Okay. You're, you're, you're like, this is one second here. Coming back. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> so it's you saying that it's um, this over intellect intellectualization, this this um, intellectual arrogance, this linear yeah. thinking that blocks awareness for spirit to build sovereignty. Right? Oh yes, and this is what is this is what is needed to heal. It's for your spirit. It's not your ego mind. It's not your mind or your head making a decision. Oh, I'm going to heal, or I get it now. I understand it now. It's the spirit returning to you, coming back to you. And that is a grace. It's a gift. You can't just you know, determine it. <laughs> yeah, like over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. I and mean, if we use that as a metaphor, um, like if we have to go over the river and through the woods to get to grandmother's house, then we need to be willing to go over the river. And sometimes that river is a little bumpy. Sometimes it's smooth. Sometimes all it takes is jumping over a few rocks. Sometimes you got to have somebody help canoe you over. And these could be our, our blocks, which could be belief systems. It could be trapped emotions and pain and grief and rage. And it could be any number of things that is, um, you know, maybe blocking us from being able to hear more clearly and to connect more deeply with something that's actually much more human. And, 
um, sometimes, I mean, this is something that I'm learning all the time because I'm not all there yet. Believe me, I have a long way to go in my own healing. Okay. I have to take that you know? because the more I learn, the more I feel like I don't know anything sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, whoa, you know? But almost the more human we need to be in a, in like a real basic way, um, like listening to my tummy. Mm -hmm. What is my tummy telling me today? What is my gut telling me today? What do I need to feed that that baby, that little girl, that teenager, the adult, so that I can get those natural human needs met in like a really basic way mm -hmm. so that I can be on a higher level of awareness for the next step. And, and so, Luke, you're bringing up something else again, which is, you know, I try to explain to people how like far away they are from making true authentic gut decisions, right? They don't even realize it anymore. You know, they walk into a store and they buy the pizza because that one's cheaper. They buy the this because it's on sale. They buy the socks even though they don't like the color because it's practical. And so they make all these intellectual decisions for every little thing in their lives, including their relationships as well, right? Yeah, like and, writing the list down and... Um, and yeah, the feeling of, of joy of like, oh, I like that color, I'm just gonna get it, you know? <laughs> it's like, that's what we... Like color, yeah. Or you feel like a, a certain color of fruit and then you have to eat like mangoes for three weeks yeah. and you don't know why, you know, or sometimes it's, it's our body telling us we need that frequency. And um, so we have to learn what those subtle cues are. Like you think, let's say, according to your diet plan, you want to have a salad and you want to eat raw foods and you want to be a vegan. And then you're, and then you get next to that food and you literally get cramps mm -hmm. because your tummy's saying, no, I can't eat that now. I need something warm like a warm soup or um like a, a baby cereal or something completely different um because you have to listen it's like a, a inner listening instead of like hard fast rules you have to learn to the listening so that your internal gps is back on track mm -hmm. so it's a lot of this spiritual stuff is actually way out there and not even connected to our real being and so a lot of these, um, a lot of the new age stuff and the occult stuff, and it, and it sounds fancy and it's like juicy metaphysical candy that we, we want to gravitate to, to. To sounds really cool, but it's 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 sometimes it's out there and it's, it's bullshit according to like if we just go to the deeper need, and then we don't have to. It's a long leap sometimes. Like this. here you wrote. Um the guilt programming, also the whole working out negative karma, new age spiritual oh, yeah. reasoning, oh, is often used to cause self doubt so that it maintains control, he maintains control, using her vulnerabilities against her. Yeah, or um, she was feeling like, oh, she should be with him. This I've got this report from other testimonials and other private communications where they were with a. It's almost like a spiritual guru, mentor, lover kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. And then where um, he's, you know, reflecting, actually cutting her down, right? And I um, was just thinking, well, you know, maybe it's I need to face my shadow and, and I need this for my positive karmic growth. And then what they're doing is they're, they're buying into belief systems that actually are fueling this narcissistic abuse um, by the predator. Yeah. And... So there, there actually may be karma, but then I think that's taken advantage of, certainly the predators take advantage of that because the real karma, well, what we're learning, sometimes it is exactly that what we sow is what we reap, and sometimes it's exactly that. But other times, if like in this woman's case, he went back and remembered a, a scene where she was trapped in a cave and it was like a um, being trapped. Um, hold one moment, just hold on for a second. I've got to... Um, Get a message just a second. Oh, okay. Can we hold that thought and just return to that in a moment? And um, sure, we'll just take a break. And pause for a minute. And yep. it's just pause find it here. Just a second. Okay. We'll be right back, guys. Oh my gosh. I this she has so much information, it is just mind blowing, mind blowing. But we'll be right back.
Hey there, I'm back. You should take a break too. Live. We're still oh, live. <laughs> I had to answer a call and I, I it was my son and he needed yeah. Oh. But hey, it's a taken care of. We'll just <laughs> go back to where we were where we were. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's just no something. worries. It's no the worries. time everybody calls. So. Yeah. And it's funny, my clock is not working correctly on my um, computer. Really strange. But um, yeah, I can't tell the time. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll get back to the guilt oh, okay. hook. We're talking guilt programming, guilt hook. And oh, the karma thing. And the karma and thing, yeah. And sometimes, like, oh, I think it was back at where she realized there was an incident in a, in a past life, which was one of the first lives that this Draco entered the scene. Mm -hmm. And it was some kind of forced imprisonment, uh, basically repeated rapes. But that was like an agreement to do these sexual rituals for these gods that was imposed a belief system that she was helping them or doing something good. Like uh, many of these priestess things, and we talked about this on another video, by the way, which we could mention that Laura Leone and I did a vid two part video about the priestess harlot program, which there are some belief systems and practices, which I think women have been led to believe that um, being a sacred sexuality tantric priestess or certain priestess roles, was benefiting their religion, their guru, their spirituality or whatever. And it's really was being used. Their energy was being used to feed these hyperdimensional beings and their agendas, which is actually counter to our true spiritual freedom and sovereignty. And so, and some of these karmic quote uh, incidents, it's actually an entrapment that occurred by force where it was more of a forced agreement of entrapment. So it's not like, he was bad, and so she deserved to be punished, kind of yeah. idea. So in reality, um, some of the conditions, we realize that there's a much deeper level of hyperdimensional predation and enforced karma, enforced patterning, which it, it ties into what they're forcing us, to, let's say, tricking us to believe in terms of spiritual religions or twisted scriptures or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's, there's a lot more guilt than I think is necessary that fall into some of these religious, especially the cult, uh, religious belief systems. So that's why um, like guilt and shame is one of the biggest killers, as well as um, self-doubt and um, overriding the spirit's nudgings, which with self-doubt and with like, oh, but I can't because I really need to be good. I need to be the perfect woman or partner, um, or I need to be, you know, good for my church or um, and you're trying to do your best, but really it's a guilt program, and then it's actually trapping you into more predation, yeah. being predated upon. So, I mean, if there's anything that I've learned is that not all this karma stuff is what it's cracked up to be in a lot of these belief systems, and, and I see more people taken advantage of, especially women, but a lot of men too. I've definitely seen men taken advantage of. It's almost, it's almost cherry picking, right? Yeah. Like going into different cultures and systems and picking out what seems to make sense, but ignoring the entire history and what like mm -hmm. mindset it was being born out of and what it's really referring to. And all of that is just being ignored. And then 30 yeah. years later, all of a sudden, one line has become the basis for an entire belief system. It's it's nuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or, I mean, they can go on about like the cults and once we realize what's behind a lot of cults and it could be religions and could have been how they got started and what kind of interdimensional beings were really playing around and sometimes they play the good cop, bad cop thing and not that I'm anti every religion because I think there's good and bad in just about all of them and, and so it's not a black and white situation. It's, um, how can we listen to the purity of our original spiritual awareness essence that is, I believe, essential goodness, um, because there's no other reason except for essential goodness in, in a true spiritual original, as far as I'm concerned. Like, there's an original natural goodness and joy, and that's, like, an innate aspect. Yeah. When we're thrown in different situations, 
we may have to be fierce and we maybe get really angry when we feel a spectrum of negative emotions and it's okay we're here in this world of everything so it's natural to feel angry and hurt when someone is manipulating you so they can control you to get something that they're actually stealing from you that is unfair and not based on true mutual respect mm -hmm. and so it's natural to feel angry and it's natural to feel frustrated and upset and want to like call them on their shit but we're told no we, we don't we can't be a bitch and we need to follow the scriptures or we need to like, you know a man has to be a man or in, in this culture maybe it's the other way around um the yeah. matriarch like, respecting the matriarch who's a bitch and he's hosted by a reptilian i mean it could be anything right, right. so how do we listen to our spirit and actually really know that's what we're hearing and so i'm going back to the the spiritual gps system and how to realign so that we're reconnected with that spiritual GPS system that actually communicates with our body as well. So, and then another way of learning, like not everybody is open to uh, learning things on an intellectual level. Um, like I find that when I work with my body in a kinesthetic way where I'm feeling subtle energy or even muscle movement in, in say yoga or dance or Tai Chi, uh, and there's certain ways that you could actually feel and connect with your spirit through listening to these subtle energies you're feeling in your body and, and movement and openings in your body, even muscle tension and muscle, how your body's structured. So your spirit, you can listen to it in many different ways and you can heal in many different ways too. Mm -hmm. So. It's a matter so of knowing what, um, what, what kind of methods do you have you found have been most conducive to helping people heal from this that have gone through this? Obviously, they have to recognize, right? They have to recognize, okay, I need to do some work here. But is it yeah, hypnosis? No, is it body work? Actually, actually, yeah, listen to my pain. I actually had to listen to my pain instead of thinking oh well it's it's just normal to be hurting all the time that's just mm -hmm. life right and then realizing well uh the marriage is bad you know um, there's a narcissist thing going on um it's not all your fault and you need to listen to the pain and you need to go through it and then so with the love bite thing i was lucky enough to, to listen to the pain and to feel it and to share it with others who are actually going through the same thing and with a mentor barbara Bartholik. And it was Dr. Carla Turner and, you know, some of these other researchers that I, I learned about it through that way. And then, then I found therapists later who could help me with how I was feeling and navigate my way out of um, what I call an emotionally unsafe way of life. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't move to spiritual sovereignty until I can even reestablish my emotional safety and, and listen enough to my inner spirit to establish emotional safety and connection with safe people to to even know where to go really and because my internal gps system is basically switched off or reversed so the programming here in a lot of religions is actually to reverse it and invert it so it makes us easy prey for the loose feeders who are using us um, as um, energy batteries mm -hmm. so we have to find at least one safe person to speak our truth with and listen to our pain or our joy or our grief or our rage or whatever it is and, and then be able to share it with a safe person and hopefully someone who can help us um, reestablish the safety and the emotional connection to recenter and redirect so that you're no longer in the battlefield mm -hmm. and that you can be in, in enough shelter and emotional safety to get the natural wisdom of the spirit talking to you and then allowing you to see your options and know that you actually have options so i mean even one girlfriend you know one mentor or, or a therapist or um a support group and and even if the support group is let's say something that's a 12-step group for codependence or for aa or depending on your stuff you don't have to tell all especially if it's this weird love bite stuff you don't have to all in the support group you can just use that to your benefit to share basic feelings like oh I'm I'm just feeling really hurt and sad right now and you don't have to say anything else and you do have a Facebook did, group, yeah. the alien love but Facebook group where if you guys feel like you're experiencing something like this you can join this group and discuss all of it where it's openly yeah. talked about. 
yes. And then that's at least one thing. Actually, somebody started the group for me. And then so we have several kind of moderators so that most of the stuff's related to, you know, the topics that I bring up in my books and surrounding topics that people have discovered along the way that we can, you know, learn how to heal and empower ourselves to really listen to our spirit so that our spirit can redirect us instead of always following some leader or guru or this therapy method or that therapy method because I think I found that everybody is unique um, and one person may really excel at one modality of healing what they find really works for them and another person may find something else so we have to honor our individuality in terms of what we know that we need and, and if we even understand what we know that we need we can start building and healing and, and really healing from these things because they're like love obsessions and they you know we feel like we lost the love of our life and some people lose their 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 entire uh, reality is crashing because their belief systems of finding the one has been shattered or they think it was their twin flame and they're they're orienting this entire metaphysical belief system that they have to connect with the twin flame to do their mission for the world and then you know i'm like wait a minute you really need to do a mission for the world in order to feel valued as a human being maybe it doesn't have anything to do with mission maybe we just need to like work with finding out what your own true needs are as a human and not having to follow these belief systems just have a little basic love a little basic emotional security and let's just go from there and let's not jump to the stars before we get some basic needs met um, yeah. and a lot of them are caught up in belief systems that are actually separating them from their true self yeah and like um, I mean, I see this with the concept that can be oh, the mission for the ETs and, you know, to be the uh, I don't know, ambassador for this ET and, you know, do their mission and to, you know, bring awareness. But, you know, like they're not dealing, a lot of them aren't dealing with their stuff. Yeah. And they're becoming more dissociated and more controlled and manipulated by a cult group or these hyperdimensional entities that are using them to promote their propaganda. Right. And like, Maybe let's just make it really, really simple. Yeah. I think to return to simplicity is the best place to, to rebuild your power and your spiritual awareness and sovereignty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we just touch on this new predator? That because you did an amazing interview with <laughs> a lot of. Yeah, I think it's and real. And, uh, well, <coughs> sorry. I mean, it's mentioned within the context of some of the alien love bite, but really more in the dark side of cupid testimonies in that book mm -hmm. the supernatural and how that i don't remember the subtitle i mean <laughs> i'm my own author and i forget but really the new predator is, is like the step ahead of like the, the more lethal ones that are not only are they hosted let's say by um a winged serpent usually it's a cluster uh, a cluster of hierarchy of beings or a super powerful one and then they there might be some actually some genetic modification or they've been part of a streamlined project through these high level um, secret occult agendas where they might have um, the spirit of a fallen angel or whatever you want to call it or a wing serpent in a hybridized body that's mm -hmm. been tweaked here and there over many generations and then then they have these abilities they have supernatural abilities and then they have like they may be working with thousands of people so they're generating loose soul force spirit energy from thousands so they, they have a lot of power mm -hmm. right and they have a lot of ability to literally um i think the, the gal was saying how she she felt one of these predator guys linking into her heart chakra mm -hmm. and you know the love right so the heart chakra and going into her akashic memory records so they're able to go into your own memories wow. And reflect that back on you as if you have this deep connection and sometimes you do have a karmic connection with these mm -hmm. but it's almost as if they're they're seeking out that information and reflecting it about to use against you to say and they're basically reading it's like a readout they're able to read out all these different ways that they can manipulate in and say that you know you have this past life with me and then they, they pull, they'll pull it up and then they'll activate the energy and so you're you're kind of like under the spell of thinking that you had all these connections with them and it has a powerful meaning you have a mission together and so they're able to procure that energy and um one of the things that Lauda leon she explains this well and it has it goes back to i like to bring it back to simplicity like um in the beginning right um 
there appeared to be original pure spirits in a human type of form, or actually maybe even before that, but where there's, let's say, a pure spirit that came from the, uh, there's Gnostic terms for this, but there's also maybe other terms where there's a pure spirit, and then there's like a counterfeit spirit that has taken a fallen path that is disconnected from the purity of its original essence, maybe, or it's only a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. And so the counterfeit has a certain pattern of behavior and a way of being, which um, can be distinguished against the original pure spirit. Mm -hmm. So the one with the predator is going to be operating in the counterfeit spirit, but a really, really good copy, pretending to be original and having a lot of supernatural abilities on top of it. So it's the counterfeit spirit will seek to copy, mm -hmm. co-opt, pervert, corrupt, copy out. So basically they, they see a target, they get them activated to manipulate them, and they procure more and more of the essence till they suck them out and replace them with a copy, basically, of what they want. So um, that's the dangerous part. It's like a vampirism I've and then a copying that. out, I've which when it combined with this whole AI thing and transhumanism is where it gets into the extreme danger of what part of that new predator is really about. So there is a technology, but there's also a supernatural element. But they've it's like they've taken it a logarithmic step ahead of, let's say, a dark side of Cupid or just a simple love light. And so somebody who's very clairvoyant and able to perceive true spirit versus counterfeit spirit versus they're hosted by this or they're hosted by a cluster or you're seeing these demons around them or you, you're perceiving this. And, you know, clairvoyant people can pick up on things in different ways. Different people have different abilities. So when you start perceiving it and then the, the whole technology thing, then that's where the new predator part comes in where you see the copied out thing and they're so good at copying. It's not a clone, but it's like a copy so they can copy your consciousness. So here's an example. And I know I'm getting, I might be getting off here, but I want to give an example of something that's been observed with people with cell phones and texting and um, certain word processing programs, even on our um, the word or Excel or whatever, how um, it copies out a word. So let's say you text something and it finishes the word for you, especially when you're texting on your cell phone. And it's some kind of algorithm which it's trying to complete it to make it more uh, easy for you to do things. But what's happening is it's copying out what it thinks the word is or it thinks you should say. And it's another program hijacking not only your text, finishing your sentences with totally misspelled words in a total different sentence. And I'm sure there's many people who experience this on their cell phone and they're just, yeah. I mean, cussing every day at the, the insanity <laughs> of what your cell phone's doing, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take this another step ahead when it comes to some of these um, special access black projects mm -hmm. in secret space program or MKUltra and some of these secret woo-woo things that they're hiding what they're really doing. And they're like 50 whatever years ahead. Yeah. Um, they're using frequencies that can hack into the mind telepathically, voice to skull technology, or even more refined than that where they're using an AI thing that once it links into your frequency, right? And then, and then it links in to copy out and change the program and divert the thought process. So it's like what happens on your cell phone, except it, 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 you know, it, it's matching it at first it matches and then it, and then it changes it a little bit until it changes the whole program. And you think that thoughts yours and it's the program copying out it's program in your telepathic and you think it's your thinking. Okay. Yeah. So this is what's happening with the copying out thing. And um, this is why we have to be very, very aware of what is my own thought process? How am I really feeling? And how I can go back to my original so that if there is some kind of counterfeit copying, co-opting thing going on, how can I stop it in its tracks or make it so that it has nothing to hook onto? So it mm -hmm. can't copy out and change your mission in life or your original essence or whatever it is. And so I think these things are happening on subtle levels. And um, yeah. you could see how people, like I said, example, and maybe they were, they were just injured people looking for a family connection, mm -hmm. you know, like they're looking for their tribe. And they, why? Because they're not getting a social need met of a basic family relationship. So they'll join a, a cult that seems good. And then pretty soon 
after a while, like they're changing, the behaviors, you, they're changing. They're changing according to the narrative of the cult instead of maybe what, what they were believing before they got into the cult and they were integrated and kind of, you know. Yeah. So we just have to watch for that and know that, like, what are we identifying with? And this goes back to Buddhist stuff, really. Like, are we identifying with our thoughts or can we identify with awareness? We can observe our thoughts. We can observe our feelings. And we are the observer of the pure awareness. And that's what we are. We are the observer. So we can identify with it and fall into it if that's what we need to do. Or we can just be an observer. So, um, so we don't have to take on more than really what we should. Like sometimes we take on, let's say, the feelings of depression, and then we mm. think we're that, and we can't get out of that. Yes. Or we think that we're what we believe in, yes. and and that's the belief system. So you know, it's just getting back to like that's a pure and, and I, I really think that's how we heal. And um, but many people they're caught up on belief systems and. Um, projecting their stuff on others so they don't even know how to have a healthy relationship and i was thinking about that too there's an entire two three generations that are coming up that have no i that have never seen mom and dad stay together through thick and thin till the end they have no idea <laughs> this is this is interesting well, they don't know it's like to, i mean i'm thinking that their brains are entrained there's an entrainment of brain frequency consciousness to cell phones and computers and you know what's coming off the cell phone towers and your cell phone your wi-fi and it's actually redirecting your consciousness in such a way that it's redirecting your consciousness itself away from something that might be more refined and deeper and original and, okay. and i think i don't know can until that i can you recognize the copy well, and this is another lesson that I had learned, right? Let's say if you've been raised in an environment where you never really felt love or you never felt valued so that you're, you're operating on what can I do to get approval so I can feel love, but it's all in this false narrative. Mm -hmm. So then we, we, then we can't recognize the counterfeit because we've been living the counterfeit. And so we fall for the traps, right? So we have to recognize the real so that we cannot fall into the traps of the counterfeit. So we always have to know the difference between those two basic essential things. So we have the original in us. We know that it's in us, but sometimes we just don't. We don't know how to recognize it and get that GPS working. So that's really the key of think of all therapy and even all relationships and that, you know, I wouldn't even do like relationship counseling with someone unless a couple, unless they were both on that same they have to be able to agree that they're going to both work on a lot enough of their own stuff to connect with like a, a true mutuality of respect and truth so they can operate from a foundation of respect and mutuality but in many cultures um, that doesn't even exist so how and it's like how can you have couples counseling when you're working with Will be extreme. Let's say an alcoholic who's hosted by a reptilian who's, who's beating the kids and molesting the kids, and they're wanting to keep their marriage together, or yeah. they don't realize that they're being abused, but they're they're wanting so hard to keep their marriage together and try to get him to change. When it's like you know the issue, that's not the issue here. The issue here is what are you doing in this relationship, and why are you devaluing yourself and harming your kids by staying in something because they're they're afraid of being alone, or they think they need to work it out and be married, but. So sometimes it's better to be alone mm -hmm. and and then I feel like you have to even be in a relationship. And so sometimes it's, it's about the belief systems we're holding. Yeah. And I don't mean to go on and on about this whole me. stick by your man and, you know, help him through. And we still have that innate feeling. I think most of us, right. I can help him, you know, like my well, presence will help like him. My eight, presence eight, supports eight. him. Right. Yeah. Like I know I, that like their love will change them though they want to heal him they'll see that you know he has this inner child or whatever and they think their love will heal them but more often than not they don't and and i've read some actually some good books that i can't remember the title of but where you can tell the difference between 
what's operating, let's say, in the partner? Are they operating primarily of, let's say, a personality disorder that starts early in life? That's a pervasive pattern of distortion. Are they operating from a simple addiction? Are they operating from abuse? Are they operating from um, being hosted by like a demonic or hyperdimensional? Right. And find out, you know, what's the main operating thing here that's creating a problem in the relationship so that we can deal with it appropriately because sometimes you think it's one thing and you, you know, you give them a chance over and over again and it's because the abuser chooses to abuse and chooses not to act in integrity. Mm -hmm. And it's choosing to abuse you because you're easy prey. Right. And so some. But this goes for men and women too, right? Like I don't want to, we're both talking in the he, she dynamic, you know, with he being the perpetrator and she being. Oh, the, that's either way. It's, it's both ways. Yeah. It's either way. Right? Definitely. Oh, I've seen it both ways. And um, so, and that's hard. Just, yeah, we have to know where they're operating from. And sometimes only a therapist knows and we can be self-deceived by our own goodness of our heart, what we want to believe and not realize that they're operating, let's say, just out of pure arrogance and hubris and, and refusal to deal with their own shit. And that's what they really need to do. Mm. And, um, and they're operating out of an addiction or a personality disorder. And if they're operating out of OCD, then they're not likely to change unless they really work on their stuff. And it's not your issue to help them or like women are like trying to pull, like, or they're trying to pull their partner into therapy and their partner has no... <laughs> oh, they'll, they'll go just to satisfy them for the moment, but they, they have no intention of following through and they'll just mimic and do what they can get away with. And they have no intention of changing because, because they really don't have the capacity or the will to even love or respect them yeah. because it's not even inside them. And this is where when you realize you've been narcissistically abused, your belief systems of what you thought was is shattered because it's like this person was using you as a battery. They're incapable of empathy and they're incapable of true love and respect. And it's not about you trying to be more perfect. Mm -mm. It's not your fault. Yeah. yeah. Except for not seeing the red flags and not being able to do the no contact before you like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. Can people contact you directly, um, Eve? Are you still doing sessions or have you moved away from that? Or right now I'm I'm not because I have so much that I need to do, but my website is always accessible at evelorgan.com. And then there's a web contact form that I should get. Sometimes it goes into my spam, but I'll get it. And then I'm also doing videos off and on, not only with you, but I've done some with Lauda Leon yes. where it's on her YouTube channel. And I try to update as much as I can so that I can update, you know, new information and, or the alien love bite page. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm doing my best, but I know that I, I have a lot that I need to work on in my personal life to, to go where I need to go and be what I need to be and to heal my own stuff. And um, it's just hard yeah. in here. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time again to be with us today and to, you know, dive into this because um, I feel that it's it's not just focusing on what can go wrong, but what can we do to make it right, right? And how can we, and you feel the same way, right? So I know that. So. Yeah. And, and we got to power. Yeah. We do. <laughs> yeah. So we need to is, is working with your spirit and working with your own more human, simple needs. If you ask me, more of a, a beingness and rootedness and connectedness by by hearing and respecting and acting on that internal GPS system. Mm -hmm. That's your spiritual truth, and you may be rejected by many. Yeah. Um, because it's sometimes in the world they're they're on the false narrative, and we need to not feel guilty for not being like the the counterfeits running around pretending they're they're it and um i would just go so far as say that the the mainstream opinion is is the false narrative for the most part right. on a lot of things so that don't don't feel bad if you're going to stand in the crowd and you have a different opinion and you know you can be okay with following your internal gps mm. You know? One thing I also believe, and um, I'm probably opening up a whole other topic, before we, but one thing I also believe is that the, the female or the feminine energy 
is a manifesting energy, right? It's a creative manifesting energy. And I feel like it's been harnessed. I feel like it's been intentionally harnessed in order to manifest whatever is harnessing us desires, right? Which is obviously a world or a people that can be fed out of infinitely and mm -hmm. on and on, right? So it's, it's yeah. So we have to be mindful how we're being, yeah. created, how we're being used to create and even what we're speaking, because that's a whole topic of the language spell casting and our acting out rituals or believing certain myths or narratives uh, recreates something over and over again. So we want to, that's why it's like, um, you know, stopping. It's almost like stopping and reflecting and being still so that you, you link on to the internal GPS and you be still long enough to like stop those other programs so you can redirect and get out of the program and get out of the spell because uh, the spell will keep going you know unless you disengage from that and re-engage with the real yes so all righty yeah. thank you so so much Eve. and i'll be watching your further um interviews i know you have a couple coming up i think yeah we have one coming up um it's going to be really interesting uh with mark gray out of france and we're going to do one that, that ties into the near-death experience, the archontic Gnostic um, Demi-Urge, and how that's interacting in the NDEs and, like, the, let's say, the new Predator and the Dark Side of Cupid and, you know, what we're learning on all these other levels and how we're going to deal with it, taking the, the next step ahead, which is, you know, the AI. And we connect all these things to, to come back to our original um, true essence as opposed to being hijacked by the AI market spirit and by the whole archontic thing, which people are starting to really recognize now. So, and, and even within the near-death experience. So that that will be really interesting, all those topics combined. So there'll be Speaking several. The AI consciousness, I had a, um, I had a journey with ayahuasca where Mama Ayahuasca, she showed me this AI consciousness. And it was a nightmare. Like that is one journey I could, if I could... <laughs> It was a nightmare, and um, it was it was such a um, driven consciousness without any like nothing could stop it. It didn't um, usually when I, I do the ayahuasca journeys, I can communicate and I can say, okay, this is too much for me, and it'll flow back and let me get my breath, and then we we'll flow forward together again. This one, wow. nada. There was no talking to it. There was no communicating to it. There was no understanding. It was just drive, drive, drive. And it was like you guys are saying, it was copying the the original spirit, the original consciousness, because it was telling me the exact same message. But the way it was telling it to me was just horrific, right? It was like grabbing the back of my neck and sticking my face into what's going wrong with the world and this and this and this. And the way I usually heard about it was very loving and gentle, kind of like, you know, like this is what's going wrong and this is what we need to do and impressing it in a loving way upon my consciousness. But this one, no, it was totally copying, but in a very, very negative way, very detrimental way. And I remember um, running away from it, hiding from it, like pulling back in my consciousness and to pull back and hide, I had to become completely still. And there were these other beings that showed up and were teaching me, like sometimes you you can't fight it, like you got to hide and run it. It was like guerrilla warfare. I know it sounds like way out there, but I don't care. <laughs> so it was like guerrilla warfare in my mind, literally that there are certain things that I could show, right? And other things that I couldn't. And um, I, it would have to be like this constant camouflage thing. And I would blend in with the, the background of ayahuasca with the, with the um, shifting shapes and colors and I would just blend in so it wouldn't see me. And, um, but it was, it was, it was, I was, I was, my gosh, even just talking about it now, I still get really choked up because I, I can still feel the way I felt. And, um, it was, it's brutal, it's ruthless and it's real. And I'm not doing this to fear monger, but it's time we, you know, we all wanna step out of the playpen and we all wanna know what's going on out there, right? We're diving into deep waters, into deep oceans, and they're just other beings that, you know, are swimming these waters and we need to know what's out there, right? So this is not meant to fear monger in any way, but to give information so that, okay, there yeah. are, other things there that we can be aware of. But I was definitely, um, I don't need to repeat that. And at the end I heard, this is what I'm up against, right? This is what I'm fighting. 
And yeah, I've talked to a lot of you or um, Wayne Bush, who does a lot of the NDE research. Mm -hmm. Where I mean, there's yeah, that would be a whole conversation, but that's that's worth noting really how that felt and that whole experience because I think that's very real. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you for sharing. So, <laughs> thank you, Eve. I'm sure you'll be back. I hope you will be with a part three eventually further down. And um, but we'll be following you for sure. For sure, I will be. And thanks again so much for um, coming back and being a part of this. Okay, great. Thanks for having me. All righty. Take Bye. care. Bye.